all right everybody welcome back to the channel my name is nice sorry so let's get this video started today i'm bringing you a non-meta build this is an Aegis horn great sword spin the wind build we're spamming spin the wind all the time this is a really fun build i'm gonna go ahead and say this is not necessarily a super beginner friendly build therefore this build guide isn't necessarily intended for beginners uh so i'm not going to be going in depth as i'd have in my other build videos but i am still going to be going over everything and before we get any further, I am going to mention that there will be a full exhausted tower run with the build linked in the comments below and in the description. That way, if you want to see the build you know, fully in action yourself, it's there for you to see. Uh, now that said, again, this is a spin the wind greatsword build. Um, this build is pretty good. It's really, really fun. Honestly, for me, the main reason I'm playing this build is because it's just fun. It's a nice change of pace from the stand from the you know the standard long sword pole arm meta builds and it holds up pretty well you have a ton of survivability your damage is not that bad and it's again it's quite fun to play um obviously we're taking huge advantage of way of the shell and we've got some pretty good augments we are taking advantage of emplaceable in this build this is a really really nice extra layer survivability especially combined with mark of the red armor this just kind of lets you whenever you want after once you've taken damage you know as long as you don't heal somehow you can just keep activating and placeable uh to get that invulnerability so uh this turns out to be a really really strong combo i will say you are probably going to want a pretty good uh tower brick sword for this build and i think that about do it for a quick overview here's the skills if you want to see what i'm using if you want to copy paste those uh just to mention, this build is relying on the Exalted Power uh, passive to an extent. Uh, so if you are not Exalted, you may want to do that first before trying out this build for yourself. And uh, I think that'll about cover it for the overview. So let's do a quick basic damage showcase and we'll get into the actual build itself. So for the showcase, we are going to start with just uh, a quick damage showcase in the training room. If you do want to see you know, proper gameplay footage of this build in action in the Azalta Tower, there will be a full run linked in the description in the comments. You can go there and check that out yourself. But really, really quickly, we are, of course, taking advantage of Angus Horn's uh, third shard. That big, juicy weapon attack damage. And as you can see, per Northern Technique, we're doing about 650,000 damage. And you know, that's pretty much it. You're just this build is basically just spamming spin the wind. It's pretty simple. And there you have it. So um a few things to mention. I do have 100 percent crit chance. And as you can see, or I guess I have too much overhealth when you see it right now, you do build about a third of your crit chance or uh overhealth meter every time you crit. You can see right there. But with my northern technique, I have a hundred percent crit chance. You're always building tons of over health, and you're always building your weapon technique meter very, very quickly. That said, you might be wondering why you're using longsword on this build, and the main reasoning actually has very little to do with um, you know, the actual great sword. This, this longsword is mainly for uh, when things get a little too sticky in the exalted tower, and you really need some invulnerability frames, right? Unfortunately. It is what it is. It's not, I guess, not a truly a pure greatsword build because especially in Yield and Commander fights, I do find myself sometimes relying on longsword, right? And that's gonna be about it for the damage showcase. Reminder, we again we do about 650,000 damage per northern technique. Yeah, roughly. So the damage is not amazing, but the survivability is quite good. And again, you can find a full run link in the comments of the video and the description uh you can go check that out for yourself if you want to see that so now we'll start talking about the shards so for the shards we are of course using way of the shell this is just too much weapon technique damage to pass up and i'm using beetle technique personally this is kind of up to you i really like beetle technique it's nice to have and honestly, the others aren't really that useful. So I'm using Way of the Shell and Beetle Technique. Obviously, again, there's not really too much to talk about here. Way of the Shell is just very, very strong. And 
honestly is a charger, so I'm very good. Uh, and Beetle Technique is just nice. So that's what we're using for the build. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the skill tree now. So for the skills, as always, you have a ton of wiggle room here. But the thing you're going to want, obviously, weapon techniques. Weapon timings, honestly, this isn't quite as necessary. But these are very nice to have. Regardless, I highly recommend you take them anyways. You're going to want at least, you're, you're going to want five points in elements, in my opinion. Because we are mostly relying on shield bash to consume in this build. So I highly recommend you put five points in the elements to get that last. And, you know, just... To continue along with that, you're probably also going to want at least either three or five points in shield attacks. Three if you're okay with just using shield bash, but spinning bash is also very nice. Spinning bash is kind of more comfortable than spinning and then shield bash for consuming. So this is kind of a personal preference. I'm putting all five points here, but that is entirely up to you. Uh, you definitely want to want the crit chance. Sundering slam is very nice for the beginning round. Highly recommend you take these. Uh, critical hit damage. It's nice to have extra damage, but again, this doesn't do anything for us in terms of our element damage, but it's worth picking up regardless. Resistance is obviously spirit, obviously vitality, obviously all stats, obviously. My, this isn't necessary at all. Might only affects your left clicks and right clicks. So if you don't want five points in might, you definitely don't need them here. There isn't really too much else I'd want. I, I guess I could put them in like rampage instead maybe some polarity attacks but it doesn't really matter too much this five points aren't necessary at all honestly and the rest of it's pretty um pretty much of the preference none of this stuff really matters too too much honestly i don't even know why i have five points in shield throw here so i don't really ever do shield throw on this build i mostly just bash uh, but it is what it is like i said the important stuff is weapon techniques weapon timing thundering slam crit chance the stats other than might and elements resistances and that's pretty much it just just remember that the consumer shield bash get that five points in elements and you'll need the points uh three or five points in shield attack and that'll do it for this uh the shield the skill tree let's start talking about the weapons so for this build we are using a great sword this is a spin to win build after all and there are going to be a few specific things I'm going to recommend for this great sword uh, that might make it a little hard to attain if, if you're a newer player. So again, this build isn't necessarily meant for new players, but I was going to get it. So for this great sword, I'm going to start off with recommending you get a void great sword for this build. This is to apply curse, so enemies do less damage to us. Next thing's next. Critical hit chance on your northern technique is pretty much mandatory on this build, in my opinion. This is for consistency's sake because you do want to hit, in my opinion, 100% crit rate on your northern technique on this build. This is for lion talisman and over health gain. This is one going to keep our keep us spinning as much as possible, and it's going to be building us as much over health as possible. And this is our main source of survivability on this build, if I'm being honest. And obviously, we have void uh, making us take uh, making enemies do less damage, and we have mark of weakness, which is also making enemies do, do less damage. And I am going to highly recommend you get this on your weapon because this allows us to run Ambit the Betrayer without having any sort of trade-off. If you really want to run this build and you just don't have a Void Great Sword with both of those things on it, then you can run Grand Master Station instead. Just remember, you will be opening yourself up to one-shots. I'll be going over more, more of that in the amulet section, but that's pretty much it for the Great Sword in terms of what you really, really have to have. Um... The rest doesn't really matter too much. The secondary, obviously, you can get, if you can get element power duration, that'd be nice. Uh, and if you could get another use or primary, that'd be nice as well. Uh, we'll mention that um, the um, blessing of power, unfortunately, isn't very useful. It doesn't really do very much. Um, it's an additive modifier. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Just know that blessing of power just isn't very good. And uh, just a reminder, you want to try to hit that 100% crit chance so whatever uh, your roll is on yours, on your greatsword, mine's 41%. So you know, I have a breakpoint of 59% crit chance. Um, and now that's going to be pretty much it for the greatsword. So now let's talk about our offhand. So again, using a longsword and our offhand instead of a Blessing of Endurance Polearm. Mainly because certain fights, again, our DPS isn't the best. So we're not, we're not like instantly killing uh, bosses on this build very often. And certain fights can, if you let them, 
can get very out of hand very fast, especially Gildan Commander fights. I was initially running this build with Blessing Endurance, but Gildan Commander fights were just absolutely steamrolling me. I just couldn't do anything. I switched the Longsword so that when things get really sticky in Gildan Commander fights, you can switch the Longsword, you can deal with the things you need to deal with, and you can move on. Uh, you can try running uh, a Polearm if you're just... If you're more patient than I am, you're more willing to kite around in Gildan Commander fights. But personally, I would recommend a longsword offhand. This can really be any longsword you want. Um, you know, a physical Owen offhand is nice because you know you can do a um, polarity attack, apply beat, bleed to all the enemies around you. They'll take some extra damage when you hit them, and you know you'll also get another element for things like rift and other effects you get from your um, you know your. Um, Ascension passes and whatnot for that. Um, but other than that, it doesn't, this longsword doesn't really matter too much. Just make sure it's a decent one. But we're really, really just worried about um, Gildan Commander fights here, if I'm being honest. This is mainly just for clearing out the time bubble dogs, if I'm being honest, right? And that's going to about do it for the weapons. Um, now let's go ahead and start talking about the amulet. So, for the amulet... I'm going to be running, I'm running, and I'm going to recommend you run Amulet of the Betrayer. This is mainly because, one, we're all running, getting Mark and what we use from the Greatsword, and this is just a nice extra layer of survivability. Unfortunately, in the Azalta Tower is the Azalta Tower. Sometimes enemies get enraged, and you get one shot, and this is a very, very handy um, you know, extra layer of defenses that prevents you from getting one shot which is primarily going to be the way you die on this build, if you die at all. Uh, the, the enraged enemies are really, really dangerous, and, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but in primary, the priorities for your stats on this are going to be crit chance. Reminder, you do want to get to a point where, with whatever you roll you have on a greatsword, you reach 100% crit chance, crit chance in total on your northern technique. Um, next element power and duration, this is a Kasum build after all. Another thing, if you can't get Mark of Weakness on the Greatsword, you just can't do it, you can use Grandmaster Station instead. Same um, priorities apply. And don't forget the All Res on the Mastery, right? Just remember that if you're going to be using Grandmaster Station instead of Amulet Betrayer, you do um, put yourself at risk of getting one shot. And honestly, I really would have recommended trading this out for extra damage. I've experimented with it. I didn't really feel like it was worth it. But if you want to do that, you probably already know what to do. So I'm not going to go into that. So let's go ahead and talk about the charm now. So for the charm, obviously, Lion Talisman is basically mandatory. You will kind of really need this. Otherwise, you're just simply not going to have enough weapon technique charge to really maintain your spinning. And for this build, we want to be spinning as much as possible. So, now obviously, if you have a good Mephra Star with the Lion Talisman effect and something else useful, just remember you can only have one mark at a time. Another thing, I, I guess I forgot to mention this, but I guess you can actually replace Mark of Weakness on the uh, weapon with the charm. I honestly, until I saw this, completely forgot that existed. Um, it is what it is. But, you know, this is really hard to get, so... And even I don't have a particularly good one, right? Uh, for example, I couldn't actually run this on my build because I wouldn't hit the threshold for 100% crit chance. Which, I guess, again, isn't necessary, but I'd highly recommend. But I guess if you can... If you can hit that threshold with a Mephra Star, with Mark of Weakness, and Critical, and Lion Talisman... You can use something like this. Otherwise, you're going to want to run a Lion Talisman. And that's going to be it for the charm. There isn't really any alternatives, to be perfectly honest. So let's go ahead and talk about the rings. So, for the rings, we have one very, very... Honestly, we have two very obvious choices. First of all, Mark of the Red Armor is very, very strong, especially on this build. Since we are running in place, well, these two combine very, very, very well very strong combo as you know with mark of the red armor when we use our lifestone instead of getting health we get over health which means we actually don't heal 
which means we can once again use the live stone in the in seven seconds later right or five seconds if you don't have a decent primal one and this you know you can essentially just chain um in placeables and you you can chain a vulnerability very nice absolutely 100 percent recommend this this also comes with a very very juicy 106 percent over health gain very very nice uh, now for your for your stat sets on this you're going to want ammo power and duration as much as you can get um and you're going to want all res on the mastery as you see i actually don't need that resistance cap that i have on mine but if you can get a um and honestly i don't actually know how you can fit any more resistance on the build uh, honestly so yeah you don't really need that uh so pretty much whatever else there works just fine doesn't really matter too much for your other ring eye the dragon is um gonna be what you're gonna want to use probably i suppose you could use a dust Lord signet if you really really wanted to but i'm gonna recommend the eye of the dragon not only does this let us apply elements which you know we do need this effect somewhere on the build but gives us some over health uh game whenever we defeat an enemy and we get some over health retention and it's a vitality ring so we can get all resistances on the mastery obviously for that Obviously, again, Elma Power and Duration, you want this. A uh, quick reminder, you want to want it. Try to even out your uh, Elma Power Duration a little bit better than I have. Uh, but, sorry. Um, over Health Gain is also a nice stat to have here. You do want a few Over Health Gain stats. I don't think you need 250%, but I probably would be worried if I was below 200%. Uh, and these rings are a good place where you can get these. I guess I should have mentioned that from Mark of the Red Armor as well. Kind of slipped my mind. Um, so those are kind of your priority stats for your rings are Elmer Power, Elmer Duration, and Over Health Gained, and all resistances for your Mastery. And honestly, there aren't really too many alternatives to this that don't like very heavily negatively impact the build. So um, that's going to be it for the rings. Now let's talk about Stone and the Banner. So for the stone and the banner, as always, I don't really care about my stone, uh, so I'm just using the Archon's tier. But if you really want to optimize this, you can run uh, something like the Bead of Hardened Ethereum, get some extra element power, something like that. But honestly, I don't really like to rely on stones, even though that said, we do use our life stone to proc and place in this build. So maybe I should care a little bit more. Um, so something like a Bead of the Hardened Ethereum with element power, and you can get some more element stats on that. That'll be nice as well. You can chant this up, and you know you get some more ammo power duration, stuff like that, right? Again, I just try not to rely on my lifestone stats as much as possible, and I kind of just, I yeah, I kind of neglect it. Uh, but that's that for that, right? Um, obviously, ammo power duration would be good for you, so it is what it is. Now, for our banner, on the other hand, you are going to want a plague pennant. Uh, I'm running this one which just stacks a bunch of element power personally. I actually have a better one uh, since I actually made this build. I have a better one now. But you do want to try to get, you know, element power and duration on this. Uh, if you can get a primal one, that's nice. If not, don't worry about it too much. Uh, but your banner will provide you with a quite a bit of extra consumed damage uh, when you have it up. It's very, very nice. Um, and there aren't any real alternatives to this. You're going to want to run a plague pennant for sure. So uh, that's going to cover it for the stone and the banner. And now, let's talk about the augments. So, for the augments, there are a few things you want to run for certain. All Light and Bloom, Void Shell, Focus, Paradise are all things you're going to want to run. Ironheart can be nice to, if you need just a little bit more crit chance to uh, meet that threshold that you need to reach 100%. Ironheart will work very well for you, but you're definitely going to basically want all these augments and in these positions. Now for your other augments, Rift is just some nice little extra damage. Honestly, these two augments are basically just stat filters, like stat fillers, right? So I'm getting my overhealth cane, I'm getting some resistances from these. Honestly, I don't really care too much about the primary effects here. Um, because again, a reminder, you do want to try, I would recommend you aim for at least 200% overhealth gain. Uh, I went for, uh, you know, a little bit extra. I've got 250%. But if you want to, you could say uh, replace one of these with an element power or duration stat. Again, a reminder this is a consume build. You want to try for you know roughly even element power and duration as much as you can get. Unfortunately, I don't have a ton, and I still do pretty good damage regardless, though, right? 
but if you can get uh, better balance stats than mine, uh, you'll want to do that. Now, I'm also using Implaceable. This is a pretty, pretty big part of this build. And, you know, this is why we, we have an open slot. You know, we're running two legendary augments, as you can see. Again, you want element power and duration on this. The other stat, honestly, um, Archon Fury damage would be nice. There are a few useful stats, but the important ones are always definitely going to be element power and duration. And this is going to affect your consumed damage more than anything else. But you definitely want Implaceable to combo this with the Mark of the Bird armor. This is going to save your life more than you might expect. And I think that about covers it for the augments. Again, Paradise, Focus, Twilight, Bloom, Ironheart if you need it. If you don't need Ironheart, you can filter in another My Augment here or something along those lines. Um, Void Shell. Again, Element Power and Duration, all resistances. And again, for the my, uh, for your Vitality Augments, make sure you put all resistances on the Mastery. Resistances are very, very important. After all, you want to get as much as you can. And honestly, there isn't really too much wiggle room except for what my except for what vitality elements we want here, right? If you have preferences for or something else here, I mean this I'm just getting a little extra damage and a little bit of ever over health gain. But honestly, these still don't matter too much. Um and that's gonna be about it for augments. Unfortunately, there isn't too much wiggle room here. I guess if you really feel comfortable dropping in placeable, I personally don't. You could do a lot more work with this build, but my opinion, Implaceable is a must for this build to be consistent and comfortable. And that's going to be it for augments. So um, let's talk about the playstyle, which is, you know, very, very simple. So the playstyle for this build is very, very simple. This is a spin the wind build, and that's pretty much all you do. You get your weapon tightening charge, and then you spin. In any case, you can do the timing attack if you want, but personally, just bam, spin, in my opinion. Um, you know, you can shield bash to consume, to finish off a boss, you know, quickly. But that's pretty much all there is to it. One thing I will mention, get rid of this guy, if you, during your northern, uh, during your northern attack, if you, like, sit there and you hold, uh, your block button, and you spam, uh, left click on PC, basically, if you spam shield bash, during your northern technique you'll get a shield bash the moment your northern technique ends which can be quite nice and thing i mentioned like i brought up before uh sudden price can be really really annoying on greatsword especially having to deal with guild commander's uh time bubble dogs so you can you know switch over to longsword for that and deal with that the damage on longsword isn't that great but it's not the worst either and it's good enough to deal with Gun Commander's dogs. Or if you just find yourself really, really rough, you need some invulnerability frames, you can, you know, do a panic polarity attack, longsword, and get those invulnerability frames. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's it's pretty simple playstyle. You kind of just spam spin the win and have your fun. Honestly. Obviously, um, at the start of boss rounds, you're gonna want to do all the usual stuff, you know. Do your Sundering Slam, put your banner down, and then, you know, start your whole shtick, right? Pretty standard stuff there. Nothing out of the norm. And you know, pop Arcane Fury as well, and a little bit of extra damage. And uh, that's about covers play style. Very, very simple um, build to play. And then and that pretty much covers all of it. So I'm, as usual, I'm gonna reiterate over a few important topics, a few important things. And uh, we'll wrap this video up. So just to cover a few important things once again. Um, and the first thing I want to mention is again, you do want to try to reach 100% total crit chance on your northern technique for consistency's sake. A reminder, you know, avoid great sword with a critical hit chance for your northern technique primary effect and get that to a total 100%. And this is a consume build after all. so. It would be uh, wrong of me to not bring up element power and duration. In terms of your consume damage, you want as much as you can get and as even as you can get it. Now, that said, you might be uh, wondering, um, you know, maybe you can try to fit some curse augments in here. Unfortunately, there aren't particularly any useful void curse augments, which is our primary damage for this build. There aren't really any void. There isn't a, a void curse augment that's going to really uh, do much for this build, right? 
so we are just using element power and duration you can try to get a better balance than i have here but it is what it is and again take advantage of mark of the red armor where you don't restore your health you can keep in place going as long as you don't pick up any health orbs if you take any actual health damage at all even if it's just a tiny sliver you can just keep refreshing your implacable and you become invulnerable for five to seven seconds depending if you have a primal version or not right and um again if you can't get marker weakness on your weapon you can get it on the amulet or the charm the charm is going to be harder obviously but uh those are your options and honestly i think that pretty much covers everything and that's pretty much all the important stuff so uh that's going to be in this video Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the build. It's a really fun one. Uh, again, if you want to see a tower run with the build, you can find those uh, in the description and the comments. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Till then, take it easy, everybody.